For those of you who've been listening to this broadcast for a long time, you know that the Dark Waters channel is an altar to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so, in service of that altar, I want to say a quick prayer before we get started. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us this opportunity again to gather together with new people, form new relationships, and expand the reach of your kingdom. I pray for each and every person that listens to this episode that they be blessed with good health, prosperous relationships, a prosperous soul, love, power, and a sound mind. All these things I ask in the name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's the one and only James Williams, Dark Waters, and I'm back with another interview. Now, if you guys have not been paying attention, my website membership is open. It's IamDarkWaters.com. IamDarkWaters.com. $12 a month. You get access to all of my horror stories. You get access to every last one of my private interviews. You get access to the comic books. You're going to get access to these upcoming spiritual warfare books where we go into things that help you with stuff that goes bump into the night and probably by the mid-october you'll get access to um the camera project that i'm relaunching where there's live cams in the middle of the woods where we're looking for bigfoot and dog man um the vestiges of the old dog man cams project which failed uh, tremendously disastrously epic fail uh, i'm bringing it back uh, but it's going to be for members only. So if you haven't signed up, bro, you're slipping and you're pimping. You need to sign up. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I have a phenomenal guest with me, Mr. Michael Cook. And we're going to start talking about Bigfoot. You guys know I've been talking to a lot of people about Bigfoot lately, um, mainly because I'm tired of talking about freaking dog, man. It gets on my nerves. Everybody want to talk about werewolves and dog, man. I want to talk, do a little bit of talking about Bigfoot. So I got Mike on. We're going to chop it up about the Bigfoots, the Sasquatches and see what i can learn from mike mike good evening how you doing my friend and welcome to the dark waters network oh thank you man how's it going man i ain't got nothing to complain about i am maxing and relaxing as we say down here and just excited about spending some time hanging out with you brother all right man me too uh mike let's let's get down to the nitty-gritty i'm thinking let's let's start back in the day not the traditional questions, not the stupid uh, traditional questions. When you were a child, right, kid running around, did you know Bigfoot existed? Did you know it was real or was it like something that uh, of a fairy tale to you? I want to know what your opinion was when you were a kid. Well, I mean, the short answer to that is hell no. I, uh, I would never, I would never believed in Bigfoot. I would never guessed that Bigfoot was even a thing. I may have seen it on TV a couple of times and, and not paid attention, but you know I spent most of my time in the woods growing up. So and I and I was one of these people that come up to me now and say, "Man, I spend all this time in the woods and I don't see no Bigfoot." Well, I was the same way for 16 years, and then one day, you know, shit happens and and everything everything goes sideways. So as far as talking about Bigfoot, nah. My parents, my my no. There was no, there was no talking about Bigfoot until after the Bigfoot encounter happened when I was sixteen, and um, and after that, my dad and I had a long conversation about a year after it happened, and you know I, I found out what he knew and reasons why he never said anything. Wow. Okay, so your dad knew all along that there was Bigfoots in the area, but he didn't talk about it. Walk me through, how was that conversation? Talk, if you don't mind, I don't know if it's private and you don't want to talk about no. it. I would love to know why he didn't say anything. This conversation is actually in, in the book I'm writing. It's called The Bigfoot Out of the Woods, uh, and it'll be out. Um, I, I, I keep putting a deadline on it, and I just can't put a deadline on it. But it'll be out. You just got to watch for it. Um so about a year after I had my encounter on the riverbank, um, 
my dad and I were watching the show called Unsolved Mysteries. And uh, they used to, uh, I, I think they re revamped it or something, or rebooted it and put it on Netflix and it kind of failed or I don't know what it's doing, but for the most part, it was about like uh, missing persons or uh, or unsolved cold cases and all this stuff. So every now and then they would have like UFO encounters and uh, abduction stories and um, encounters with like chupacabra or something, you know, mundane, weird stuff that some of the audience was probably, you know, interested in. So they threw that in every now and then. But that particular night they were talking about the Patterson Gimlin film. And my dad and I were sitting there watching. I was reading a book or something, kind of, you know, half watching, half not. And I look up and I see Patty, the, the Bigfoot in the Patterson Gimlin film, turn her head and look at Roger and Bob. And dad said that I just turned white. I, I, got, I got snow white. I, I started sweating. Um, he said, are you okay? And I said, no. I'm not. I've kept a secret for about a year. And he said, well, what about it? So I told him the incident on the riverbank and, you know, how it fell, uh, fell off the hill in front of me and, and all this stuff. And the whole time he was sitting there listening to me intently. And I said, Dad, what are you, what are you thinking? Well, what are you thinking? And I was expecting him to bust out laughing at any moment, call me a liar, tell me I'm crazy and all this stuff. And he just closed his eyes and he said something that would propel me into the next 20 years. Well, son, they're out there. And I said, well, what do you mean they're out there? And he said, well, they're out there. He said, I said, why would you never tell me? He said, would you ever went out in the woods? Would you ever went hunting, fishing, you know, you know, riding your, riding your four-wheeler, your ATV? Would you ever done that? And I said, hell no. And he said, okay, your life has been better without knowing. And I hate that you have found out like this. So he goes on to tell me about an incident that happened to him. And he never did see the creature, but this was long before, this was in the 80s, this was before black bear were real present here in eastern Kentucky. There were few and far between. And he said something stalked him one evening, he was squirrel hunting. And he saw something tall and dark colored, covering the hair, and it ducked behind the tree, unlike any bear behavior that he he has ever heard of and i've ever heard of too um and i've studied wildlife you have to in this stuff so dad he knew about this the whole time and he said you know it was just a burden of knowing and i you know that in the book i'm writing it the the very next chapter is called the burden of knowing and i talk about how you have to separate your, if you if you are like me, I, I have three different lives now. Uh, I live three separate lives, and it's it's a it's it's a nightmare some days, but most days it's all right. But I live my personal life, my uh, business life, and and my Bigfoot life, and all three of them are completely separate. In my personal life, I actually, for those who don't know, I can't say what I do. But I work for the government. I don't work for Area 51 or some top secret. No, I work for the state government in an office Monday through Friday. <laughs> I actually have a very boring job. Uh, I like it like that. It's good money, and I have good benefits, and I have an eight to four job, and that's that. You know, that's I worked hard for it. But <clears throat> in my personal life, I'm a dad. You know, I, I go hunting, I go fishing. Um, when I'm squirrel hunting or deer hunting or turkey hunting, I'm not really thinking about Bigfoot unless something significant happens or I come across something. I'm not actively looking for Bigfoot when I'm doing that stuff. Then you have the Bigfoot life, the Michael W. Cook, um, where I am who I am. I've been a researcher for 20 years now. And... You know, in the last couple of years, it's actually, it's amped up. And I'm, I'm involved in a new project we'll talk about in a little bit. But big things are coming. And then, you know, I've got the, I've got the barbecue sauce deal. I've, I own a barbecue sauce company called Sasquatch. So there's actually four lives I live there. So it's, it's strange. But dad, dad is more, dad is 70 years old now. And he is more accepting 
of this. Now, my mom, <laughs> she'll roll her eyes all day long. She's one of these. If I haven't never seen it, I don't believe it. You all just, you all just do whatever you want to do. But my dad will sit and read, read encounter reports and stuff. He don't get out much anymore. Um, but he's always interested in what I'm doing. He kind of lives vicariously through me. That's awesome, bro. And you know, you're a hundred percent right about the lifestyle that kind of being in the cryptid paranormal field forces you to live. Like I live a lifestyle where I'm father, um, soon to be husband. I'm confidant and friend to people. And then I'm political consultant. And then at the end of the day, I'm dark waters. And then it's amazing when uh, people who I work with in the political realm, they'll find out, hey, man, you got a YouTube channel. And then they'll come and listen. They'll be like, what the hell are you talking about? And we're like, yeah, well, you know, this is what I do. I like doing this. And they'll say, well, and then they start getting into their stories and their encounters. It actually has been really good for business because people, they ask some profound questions and they want to know things about their lives and things that they've experienced. But it's amazing because you have to kind of compartmentalize your life. Um, and it's crazy to have to do that and keep up and juggle all that stuff. It, it really, really is. And I, the audiences don't hear that side of people who are in this business and this is a business i know you know it unfortunately a lot of people on youtube haven't figured that out yet but um it, it, they don't understand this aspect of the business juggling all your personal things with the content and events and things that you deal with on a daily basis but i, I just wanted to i wanted to chime in on that and, and touch bases on it so you're a busy guy you got this south carolina bigfoot festival coming up you got the virginia bigfoot fest coming up you got the Ron Hall event coming up with um, Sasquatch and Treat. Uh, that's in Pennsylvania for the American Legion. Man, you guys got a, you got a lot going on. Walk me through. Yeah. Um, what can a person expect when they see you at an event like this? What what what's what do you typically do? Um, recently, since the since the barbecue sauce went went worldwide lately, um, uh more people are are going to the site they're going they're emailing me uh, a couple weeks ago i was on coast to coast am and and i i, I shoot you not on this i swear to god on this right now i'm sitting at 9752 unread emails just from that monday morning to that today uh most of them are barbecue sauce orders or people wanting me to be on a show or whatever for the most part um, uh, I'm at my booth. I'm I'm chilling. I'm talking. I'm I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I hate those. I hate this word. I really do. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not some kind of Hollywood star. I'm not. I've been on TV. Oh well. That uh, you. I, about everybody's been on TV today. So, um, I've started signing barbecue sauce bottles, which is. Which is odd for me. Uh, it's just I, will, had to be weird, I think it's bro. hilarious. That had to be weird. It's as weird, hell. man. Uh, this I done this East Tennessee Bigfoot Festival a few weeks ago, and all these people were buying barbecue bottles, barbecue sauce bottles, and they were um, they were they were coming back and with a with a sharpie, and I'm like, what do you want me to do? And they're like, sign this bottle for us, and I'm like, okay. You know, where's the where's where's Benoit? Where's the Squatch Watchers? Where's where's these guys at taking taking pictures? But these people were actually very serious. Um, so I do this when I when I'm at an event. You can find my you you cannot miss my table. You cannot miss my booth. Uh, there is a huge picture of me, and it says Michael Cook. These woods are haunted. Travel channels. These woods are haunted. Um, and it has a huge eight foot long sign that says Sauce Squatch LLC, barbecue sauce and gourmet hot sauce. Um, when I done the, the Virginia Bigfoot conference back in June, I had this guy sit, I, I told Daniel, he's the, uh, he's, he's the organizer of that event and he was going to put me in the speaker's room where everybody was speaking at. And I said, no, I don't want to be in there. I like talking too much and I can't talk to people when people are doing presentations. So he put me out in the vendor's hall and put me right in front. And this little dude was sitting next to me the whole time, all day long. 
And uh, at the end of the day, his girlfriend comes up to me and she says, will you talk to him? And I said, what do you mean? She said, he's scared to death of you. He, he has been starstruck by you all day. And I said, hold up. No, I, I grabbed him. I said, let's walk outside, dude. And we walked outside. I said, man, you don't have to be starstruck with me. He goes, dude, you do everything that I want to do. And I said, get out and do it. Go out there and hunt Bigfoot. Go out there and, and, and fool around in the woods. Anybody can do it within reason. Um, kids at events. I love interacting with kids. I love talking to kids. I am, I, I love kids. That's just, that's just how it is. And sometimes children will teach you more than an adult ever will. In fact, I will say all the time, children teach more than adults ever do. You know, I tell you, you're going to have to come to terms with the fact, Mike, that you are a celebrity. I know you don't want to say you're a celebrity, but you're going to have to come to terms with the fact that you are a celebrity. And the reason why I'm, I'm going to say this to you is because for your own safety and your own uh, wherewithal to keep your wits about yourself, bro, you need to come to terms with the fact that you're a celebrity. What I really admire and what I'm hearing from you and I really like is that, um, and I've said this a thousand times since I've been in the, the industry about seven years, I say, you know, there are so many things that corporate America capitalizes on that have to do with the cryptid world that the actual participants in the world, in the, like the creators and the authors, they do not capitalize on it. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that you've got your barbecue sauce. And I think you should do some barbecue sauce. You should do some salt and pepper mixture. You should do some paprika. You should do it all because it's a marketplace that's there you know like what was the people who had the beef jerky it was beef jerky and they had like a sasquatch that they used to market the beef jerky right oh um, yeah jack links jack, jack links. links right there's two lines of thought mike so there's people who in this field who say well you know um corporate america has has done has commercialized bigfoot to the point to where they've taken it and they've turned it into a joke and to where people aren't aware of it and they don't believe it's real but on the flip side of the coin um that that whatever jink links beef jerky has actually brought awareness to it so for a potential for a person like you that puts a product in the store when you go to market your product if this next to that beef jerky people say oh man i've had the jack links beef jerky with the sasquatch on it let me try this it's actually better for your marketing and your branding because they spent the dollars to open that marketplace up and i don't think the people in this industry understand that it's there's purists in this industry who are just purely, you know, I'm a purist, I'm a researcher and I'm going to go out in the field and I'm going to spend the night in the woods and get bit by mosquitoes and, you know, um, have raccoons and rats crawling all over <laughs> me. I know you do. I know. But it's the, it's the purists that need to come to the understanding that you won't really be an effective researcher if you have no funding. And if you have funding, um, then you can really do some research. All right. Let's go to. Um, this TV show that you are on. What was the name of the show again? It was These Woods is Haunted, Travel, right? Travel Channels, These Woods are Haunted, uh, season two. Uh, um, how in the world did you end up on that? Oh, Lord. Uh, so I was, so I was actually in talks with them about doing a TV show. It was very, very confidential. I hadn't told anybody, uh, even the girl I was dating at the time, what I was, what I was doing. I, I spent, uh, Every day, about two hours on Skype with producers um, for about a month, talking about this TV show that I that they were they were planning up and that I would be the perfect fit for. And um, we had went to um, we had went to Hartford City, Indiana. My girlfriend at the time she was a ghost hunter and she wanted to go to this uh, Monroe house, a, a very haunted location. Um, we spent two days there. We came home, and the very next day, I'm still on this road trip hangover, uh, literal hangover. I drank that night before. Um, and our friend Kenny uh, from Eastern Kentucky, I lived in Central Kentucky at the time, and he he called me. He said, "Hey, man, I'm on my way." And I went, "Where are you coming to?" <laughs> and he said, "I'm on my way there. You told me a couple weeks ago to come up and we go squatching today." And I'm like, "Oh no." That's the day. And I look at her and she goes, you don't remember that? And I said, no, I don't remember nothing. I'm, I'm horrible. I have a horrible memory. Um, so we, uh, 
I said, well, shit, you know, I'll take them. I'll, I'll take him and her to this location that we've had stuff happen, but it's kind of been dead for a couple of years. And we'll get in, we'll get out, we'll go eat chicken wings and drink beer tonight. That's all I had on my mind, really. So we get uh, we get up in there, and, and the event happens. Later that night, we got surrounded by six Bigfoot. So long story short, we got surrounded. We made it out alive, obviously. Uh, most terrifying, uh, personally terrifying event like that that's ever happened to me. Uh, not the scariest thing. That's not the most I've ever been. I almost lost my son one time, and uh, that was probably the, anybody asked me what's most terrified I've ever been. That's that sitting in a hospital room listening to a doctor tell you that he don't know whether your son's going to make it or not. That's the worst night of my life and you know thank god he he made it and all that stuff but uh, a few days later we went back to talking um on skype and they kept on looking at me on skype and they said you you are you here and i'm like can you hear us and they're like i'm like yeah i can hear you they're like well what's going on i said what do you mean they said well you look like you're you're not even there you look like you're somewhere else so i'm just thinking about this stuff that happened the other night and trying to wrap my head around it, and they're like, uh, uh, what happened? So I went through the whole story about, you know, getting surrounded, and they said, well, can we call your girlfriend and your friend? And I said, absolutely, here's their numbers, call them. They called me back a few hours later, and they said, so listen, they said the same thing you said, word for word, and I said, yeah, well, you know, it happened. That's, that's what happened. And they said, well, we're producing another show, and it's called These Woods Are Haunted. We want you all to be on an episode of it. And I said, I don't know. You know, let's let's focus on this show first, and then we'll talk about it. And they're like, well, let's get this ball rolling. And, and they talked me into it. So fast forward two months later, we're in um, we're in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And there we done the episode. Took all day to film uh, our interviews. And then it went for like almost two years before it aired. So it, within those two years, they actually worked out the deal to get the other show on the road. So I'm in Asheville, North Carolina, March the 15th, 2020. And we just had wrapped up filming this, this pilot uh, episode and all this stuff. And it was a show about me traveling around. It was supposed to take the place of Bizarre Foods. And it was it was about me traveling around where I was going to eat, and and it was culture, and then we go into Bigfoot, ghosts, and whatever, what have you. So that being said, the uh, and uh, the uh, that being said, uh, we're in a Mexican restaurant that evening eating we're in a, at a bar and i said uh I, I said i got an email you know let me see what this email says so the email said hey heads up show's airing tonight and i said what show when they're like uh, these woods are haunted and i'm like oh shit <laughs> so i get uh i get up and i said guys i get that show i filmed two years ago is coming out tonight and they're like, okay, sit back down, chill out, and all this stuff. So I sit down, and the bartender, we didn't say a word to the bartender about this. And he walks over, he says, are you guys watching this? And they were playing like rugby or soccer or something on TV. And I said, no, nah, man, we're, we're, we're fine. We're just, we're just chilling out. And he goes, oh, I'm going to turn to this show I like to watch. There wasn't nobody in the bar at the time. So he flips it over to the travel channel. I look at the guys with me, and I'm like, there's no way this is going to happen. And in a just like 10 minutes, there were probably 60 or 70 people piled into that bar. And I said, this could either turn out really cool or really weird and really bad. Right, yeah, that could turn out real weird, bro. So we get, uh, I'm sitting there and I said, you know, maybe they don't show me much. And all of a sudden, the first thing you see is me. 
And I said, well, you know, I, I, I wear glasses and I'm not yeah. wearing glasses and that. I said, there's no way. And, and one of my buddies, he, he leans over, he says, yeah, dumbass, you're uh, wearing the same exact shirt you're wearing on the show. And I said, oh, <laughs> you got to be kidding me. And I look down and I have the same, I love that shirt. I just looked at that shirt the other day. I had the same shirt on. And I said, oh, no. Well, this old lady sitting next to me, she says, uh, you know him? And I said, no, I don't. But he's awful good looking, ain't he? Sexy man. And uh, they, uh, <laughs> I said, nobody's watching TV. And I look over and everybody in there is staring at that TV. And all of a sudden, in one collective mo motion, they all look over at me at the end of the bar. And I was like, well, hell, this is going to get weird. And it did. Uh, it, I had so many people come up to me that night. Um, and the Facebook requests, the emails, and everything else. I don't, I don't mind it. I really don't. Um, but every time that show reruns now, I'll get, I don't know when it reruns. I'll get a deposit in the bank, and I'll get 300 friend requests right out of the gate. So it's it's just just wild, man. It's a wild life. It really is. And you know that show that we were filming though in Asheville. You know how you're really you you know how you some people get really high up there, and then all of a sudden they send a uh, missile and it shoots you out of the sky and you everything kind of falls at once. Yep. So I come home. This is March the fifteenth. 2020 i come home the 17th to a completely different world the pandemic was in full force the country shut down everybody's freaking out stay home all this stuff i get um i wake up on the uh on the 20th of march and to a to a voicemail from my mom and she said, Mike, I don't know if, 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 if my mom, my grandmother, is going to make it. And on the 27th of March, my mama passes away. On April the 4th, I get that phone call that I had, I had a feeling I was going to get, and it was from the production company. They said, listen, this ain't a good time. We can't do this. We're shutting it down. And they shut the son of a bitch down. And I said, you know, this this is how it goes. And it's like right now. I mean, you know, I'm not a pessimist. I'm not an optimist. I'm a realist. Everything's going pretty good right now. I'm just waiting. What's going to happen? Where is it at? And I'm, I'm always kind of looking over my shoulder now. I'm like, okay, where is it at? And, but hopefully nothing like that happens. Hopefully everything just keeps on going. I, 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 I live a... I live a pretty good life, and I'd hate to see something, you know, throw a wrench in, in a gear. But you know what? I, I'm a riser. I, I get up and I go. I, I don't. I don't. If something knocks me down, I just get back up, dust myself off, and may not go that path, but I'll go another path. So, but you know, with the TV show, you know, you're talking about we're talking about being weird, like today. I mean, you know, in today's times. I have a job where I, I interact with a lot of people all the time. And it's not something that happens all the time, maybe once, twice a month. Every now and then I'll have a client come in and sit down with me and they'll sit there and stare at me for a minute. And they'll go, oh my God, I saw you on TV last night. And I'll be like, yep, now we got to take care of this, old pal. What are we going to do about this first? And then I'll talk to you about Bigfoot all you want, but we got to take care of business first. Nah, man, that's interesting, man. That that's a, a interesting life. Um, I'll say something to you, uh, just to try and help you with something that that you just spoke about. Um, one of the things I've learned from dealing in this field is you get to a point to where you get a real understanding of what happens in the spirit realm. But I'm not talking about like some psychic woo woo, you know, spirit speaking to me. I'm talking about from a biblical perspective everything that happens in the physical realm it starts in the spirit realm and if you want to make sure that things don't fall apart for you then you go into prayer 
and you start praying for things that go the way you want them to go. And that's what I do um, to make sure that the projects that I'm working on don't fall apart. Because uh, literally, in the spirit realm, things will start falling apart. Things will wage war on your life, your family, your kids, your, your business. And you are supposed to be a person who participates in those spiritual decisions. But if you neglect it, then you find yourself looking over your shoulder trying to figure out what's, what's going to come next. But if you're active, spiritually praying and interceding on your behalf, then typically those things in the physical realm just don't manifest in that negative manner. So just keep that in mind, bro. Keep that under your hat because it sounds like you, well, you know, are a man is going to do some huge things and deal with it on that realm and watch how it all unfolds, brother. Well, that's just like a couple of weeks ago. I, I went I went by a friend of mine's house. Uh, unexpectedly, I, I didn't know. I was taking some barbecue sauce by there because they live pretty close to my son. Um, and I don't get to see them much. And uh, she is a uh, psychic medium, and, and her husband is a really good friend of mine. He does a lot for the VA and stuff. Um, but she's a psychic medium, and we were talking about stuff, and she said just about everything you just said. She said, and she called it the uh, physical man manifestation of cognitive thought and prayer. If you write stuff down and you, you, you focus on that, then you can turn prayers and thoughts and like you said that's already there you just got to kind of peel through it and say okay here it is uh with me i try to treat now there was a time in my life that i i will admit that all i thought about was fame fortune and 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 the the definitive proof of what that meant of bigfoot and i even used to tell people and i still do every now and then you know if it, any researcher out there that's never thought about the uh the outcomes of them being the uh, discoverer or having the definitive proof of, of a Bigfoot. Um, what would happen after that? Would the, any researcher out there would be lying if they said they never set thought, set thought about that because your grandkids, 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 your brothers and your sisters, kids and grandkids and grandkids, anybody that's around you will never have to worry about another thing in their life. In fact, when it would be discovered, your name would be attached to it. I mean, it would be it would be a, a whatever it would be. I, I'm one of these people where my 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 theory on Bigfoot and what they are have, have has evolved so much over the last twenty years. I don't know if we'll ever get that get that proof that that science says we need. But um, you know, I used to think about fame and, and fortune and and you know being that guy. And I found out, I found out recently. You know, I quit doing that probably six, seven, eight years ago. But I found out recently. You know, if you want something, it'll come. It might not be tomorrow. Might not be next week or next year. But eventually, it'll come. But I still maintain that I'm not a celebrity. I'm, I'm, I'm Michael Cook. I'm, I'm just me. I'm, I'm a hillbilly from Southeast Kentucky. And I have a weird hobby. <laughs> now I'm with you. You're Michael Cook, the hillbilly who cannot go in a bar room without everybody knowing who he is because he was on television. But if you want to classify that as not being a celebrity, brother, I'm going to rock with you. Ladies and gentlemen, for the record, Mike is just a regular dude who just so happened to be on TV. That's how we going to play this. Even though I'm still going to exactly. whisper, he's a celebrity, y'all. Say, oh, he's a celebrity, but don't worry about it. He's a regular guy. Um, bro, you mentioned something about the evolution of your theories on Bigfoot. Walk me through your theories as uh, how they evolved from what you thought it was to where you are now. I would really be interested in hearing that. So once I came out of the collective Bigfoot closet, whatever anybody wants to call it, about my encounter, I started hanging out with people and, and searching for people. And, you know, back then, the Internet was pretty new. Uh, it'd been around for a little bit, but, you know, 20 years ago, Google wasn't even around. Uh, <clears throat> the Google that we know. But um, I got hooked up with this organization. It's the largest organization on Earth. And, um, and I became a field researcher for them. And, you know, at the time, I got drilled in my head that this was a unknown species of primate. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, 
just just a straight up species of primate, probably the missing link. And I maintained that belief up until about 10 years ago. And I was on an investigation. This old man said that he had a Bigfoot encounter, and I got called out to go investigate it and all that. And he invited me to stay the night that night. And um, he told me something that I was supposed to discount. I was supposed to say, okay, you know, this dismiss this, and this old man's hallucinating. But he said that he watched a Bigfoot turn into a light and float off into the forest and disappear. But I would have dismissed it. I would have discounted it 100%. If he would not have been looking me dead in the eyes, he had that conviction. He had a fear of something he did not know what he saw. He knew that it was a Bigfoot, but he didn't know why it turned into a lot. And I said, well, you know, we'll, we'll talk about this. And I wrote my notes down and everything. So later that night, I went out into the woods close to where he had his encounter at. And I had a little headlight on. I had a red light on it. And I was sitting there. I was real quiet. I, I'm a real quiet researcher most of the time. Every now and then, I'll do a whoop or a tree knock or something like that. But I like listening. I like listening to the forest. And um, he gets, uh, or I'm, I'm sitting there. And over on the side, I hear what sounds like footfall, just footsteps. And I said, okay, I might have something going on here. And right in my ear, I, I felt something breathing. I mean, it's, it's really close to my face. I could feel, and I could even smell the breath. And... Uh, you got to put yourself right there in my place for a second. This is the closest I've been to a Bigfoot in about 10 years or so. The first time I was just, you know, I was 50 foot away from one. But this thing is right here in my ear. Worst fear would have been a, you know, and it did go through my mind, this could be a bear. But when I finally got enough balls, enough guts in me, to turn and look, I swung around real quick and looked because if I was going to get eaten, I want to see what's going to eat me first. You know? I agree. So I turn around real quick and look, and you can see where the breath was. But man, there wasn't nothing there. And right next to me, something smacked the tree I was leaning up against, and it knocked nuts and stuff off of it. And I'm a firm believer in not running, but by hell, I cut a trail that night, and I ran all the way to that <laughs> man's porch. And I said, you know, he's sitting out there. He goes, so how'd it go? And I said, I don't even want to talk. I got you get me the hell out of here now. I said, oh, what the hell you got out there? And he goes, that's why you're here. I don't know what's out there. So that kind of transitioned me over to, okay, now, <laughs> I went from knowing these things were flesh and blood, undiscovered species of primate, to I just watched something take a breath and release it and fog come out of its mouth without it even being there. Something is going on. And I took it to the, the organization and I said, this is what's going on. Well, as most would think, I got laughed at, and that made me kind of start easing away, and finally I put my resignation in for him, and I said, I can't do this with you all anymore. So fast forward about five years after that, a researcher, a friend of mine, my, and myself, we were in the research area known as P3 in central Kentucky where the event that happened on Travel, Travel Channel happened, and we watched a lot a blue light float through the forest, float to the top. To a flash, almost 30 seconds later, a rock the size of a football got thrown over our heads. So, fast forward. The uh, 
the the sighting reports that I've gathered. I started looking at them, and and there's so many supernatural um, things that happen with them. You can't you you can't not believe these people because it ain't it ain't something outlandish. It's the same stories over and over and over again. These things are disappearing. They are they are turning into light orbs. Um. I froze when they when I saw it. Uh, I felt a ripple of sound go through my body, and it froze me. That's infrasound, which is a known scientific uh, occurrence that that animals give off. Uh, tigers, elephants, uh, main two. Um, then the lights. What are they? I don't know. I want to know. That's why I'm out there doing it. Every every chance I get. Two weeks ago, we were in we were in this new in my research area now, um, and I'm on this project now. It's called Project Quantum Bridge, and we are looking for triangle like phenomenon in the Appalachian Mountains, much like the Bermuda Triangle. And the Appalachian Mountains is a is a plethora of weird things going on. Uh, the Appalachian Mountain Range is main, main, mainly made up of iron, or iron and limestone quartz deposits. Limestone quartz houses energy, produces energy, so forth and so on. That night we went out, two weeks ago, we saw a orange, it was like a dull orange light go across the sky. We put a flare on it, there was no source of energy. You could see the you could see the orb just fine in the flare, but you couldn't see what was propelling it. If it had an engine, it wasn't hot. None of it. So what the hell was it? We heard whistles, we heard knocks, and then I got this. A buddy of mine snaps uh, sends me a text, and he says, "Hey, what are you doing?" And I just snapped a picture of a fire. And I said, you know, sitting by the fire, and he said, dude, look at that picture. And I pulled the picture back up, and right there in that picture is a face. And it's not pareidolia. You can put, you can make out the nose, the eyes, and everything. So what the hell's going on in these woods? And the organization that I talked about, they are now investigating um, supernatural occurrences. That have to do with Bigfoot. So there has to be something to it. So I went from flesh and blood 20 years ago, undiscovered species of primate, to, oh, yeah, we'll talk about this all night if you want to. Because there's a lot of it could be's. So I don't know. I don't know if they're, if they're interdimensional, if they're uh, supernatural, if they're paranormal, if they are uh, extraterrestrial. I believe that they are born flesh and blood, just like you and I are. Uh, average, uh, you know, I believe they are some sort of primate, but I believe they are endowed by their creator with extra abilities that some of them may be able to tap into, some of them never do. And that's not out of the question, because humans have extra abilities. Um... Psychic mediums, people who uh, are ultra sensitive—that's an extra ability. Um, children, good example. Children, I believe children see things that we do not see. You can watch videos. You can watch your babies or your children under a certain age, and they'll talk to imaginary friends. They'll look at stuff. Babies will follow stuff around the room. I believe they're seeing something on the other side. And, you know, we won't until, you know, our time comes. But, nevertheless, um, fact is a lot stranger than fiction ever thought about being. No, I 100% agree with you. i tell you some of the things that I've learned. So, the Dalt Waters brand has been built on true paranormal encounters where I talk to eyewitnesses and... Um, Oftentimes I wouldn't meet with people face to face, but I would spend, if it's a really good encounter, I would spend 
10 to 15 hours in communication with a person, just quizzing them on what happened, finding out about the location, all these different things. And so I started taking data points from conversations of people who I believe were telling me the truth. And then I started taking that data and going to Native American tribes members, um, and uh, especially here in Louisiana where they'll, they'll talk to me because I'm a, a native Louisiana son. And man, some of the things I, 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 I they started teaching me, for example, um, the Stegini and actual Bigfoots being orbs and that the tree knocking that people hear is the actual, that orb of light that you see that manifests. The tree knocking is that orb of light, which is the Bigfoot coming out of the tree which is why you hear those knocks so you hear a knock over here you hear a knock over there um they believe that that's them coming out of the tree and so you see the orb you see the orb floating around you hear the knocks and then all of a sudden you'll see a bigfoot and you'll see that orb as they go away one of the other things I, when i was running this little camera project we had cameras in the woods i took a lot of the photos and showed them to some of the tribe members down here and not only did they point out the Bigfoot faces in the photos, but they told me, they said, James, you have to be very, very careful because we want you to look at what else is in that photo. And so when we look at the photo of the Bigfoot, you would see a Bigfoot's brow, nose, and they pointed out immediately. There's one of them right there. And they'll say, look right there. You see that thing that looks like it has a hood and white eyes. You see that thing over there that has this symmetrical face and these big beady eyes. Those are the entities that travel with these creatures. And um, one of the gentlemen gave me a very stern warning. He said, I want you to understand as you film these things and as you partake in profiting off of them um, from a spiritual aspect, they're going to lay claims to you. And I was like, wait, what? He said, that's why we don't talk about them, because if you profit off of talking about them, they lay spiritual claims to you. And I was like, whoa. And so they went deep. They was like, listen, they'll they'll <laughs> petition to take your life. They'll petition to kill your family. I'm like, man, that's crazy. No, that's why Native Americans don't talk about them. And I was like, wow. So, bro, I, I think well, you're 100% on track with all the data that I've had. It's, it's insane once you really get beyond, oh, they're flesh and blood, which is impossible if you really talk to witnesses to just say, oh, they're flesh and blood. You got to be crazy. Well, you see, you know, just like the trees, Ronald Moorhead, uh, the Sierra sounds, um, the man behind all that, he talks about that. He talks about them being in the trees. They're not like laying in the trees. They are physically part of the trees and they emerge from the trees. And you got to look at trees. Trees are the most, the, the largest organism on earth is, is, is a tree. They, they, their roots are interconnected. And when one dies, uh, one starts to die, it will it will send all of its sugars, all of its energy and stuff down through its roots into its its brothers and sisters, and and help them grow, and then it'll just fade off and die. But, um, you know, Native Americans they talked about these creatures being a walker of both worlds. There's 547 Native American tribes in the United States alone. And every single one of them have their own versions, their own variations of these creatures or these entities, these beings, whatever anybody wants to call them. And they all, for the most part, talk about how they are a walker of both worlds. For me, you know, with, with what we're doing with the Quantum Bridge Project, this, this team has noticed a, a weird occurrence. So they're in these paranormal hotspots, these haunted houses, these haunted asylums and stuff, and they'll get spikes of radiation and spikes of uh, electromagnetic pulses the same magnitude as a nuclear blast. So what the hell's going on here? You gotta, you, 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 you gotta, you gotta sit and think about this. So uh, what could cause that other than a nuclear blast? So that goes into the scientific method you have you have the question then you hypothesize and you put it to the test and everything else comes as it goes but if these things have that ability to cross dimensions or you know even emerge from the trees say the trees are a different dimension you know they're, they're a different entity in their own 
then that would that would suffice to say that that would cause some kind of electromagnetic occurrence plus radiation breaking through that atomic field. I sound a lot smarter than what I am. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I threw out some big words there, man. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is, is it, it, oh, what are they? You know, and that's my biggest question to people. And I love when I start, like when I do presentations, I do this, do this thing called the Bigfoot Experience. And it's what I talk about at these conferences and events and stuff um, as a speaker. I, I, of Bigfoot, what they be and all this stuff. And that's who I walk around the room. I walk around, and it don't, it don't matter how many people's in there. I've done it in front of a hundred people. I've done it in front of a thousand people. I walk through and I'll pick a random person out and say, "Hey, tell me what Bigfoot is. What is Bigfoot?" And they'll they'll tell me their answer. Well, the next slide that I put up on my on my PowerPoint is the answers. They're already written. I want to see how many people actually hit my answers that I've already written down. For the most part, they all do. They all hit you know, dead on the money. But for the most part, though, any researcher that says, I know, they don't. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I say it like that. Anybody who says, I know, you don't. You, you don't know. Because something's going to happen and it's going to throw you off and you're going you're gonna to think of something else uh, that these could be. So, you know, backtrack a few weeks ago. I I done this podcast one night or a radio show with this with this lady, and I got off and I came outside and I was I was sitting here and I I was just thinking. I had my phone in my hand, and up here on the hill behind my garage, I hear what sounds to me like an R two D two whistle. And I know it sounds weird, so I know how it sounds. So a couple of hours later. A buddy of mine calls me and he goes, hey, how'd the show go? And I said, it went pretty good. You know, we're talking. And I said, uh, man, something weird happened earlier. I heard a whistle back here behind the garage. And he said, no kidding. What does it sound like? I said, I don't know. It, it, it's weird. And he said, well, we heard a whistle outside of our kitchen. They live about 15 miles from me. It gets weirder, by the way. It gets stranger. I said, what did it sound like? He said, we thought it was the alarm, the whistle alarm that goes off on the uh, dishwasher. Like, do 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 And the dishwasher wasn't on. So let's go on. Fast forward to the next morning. Um, Taylor Cook, he's part of the Squatch Watchers in North Carolina. Uh, relation, by the way, we are distant cousins. Of, uh, not confirmed, but we... we pretty much have it confirmed. So Taylor and I are talking because they're trying to do some business stuff and I was walking them through some stuff, how to go through the Secretary of State and all this stuff. And he said, uh, how'd the show go last night? I said, pretty good. He said, well, we went out squatching. And I said, yeah, did you find anything? You hear anything? He goes, yeah, we heard a whistle. And it sounded like R2-D2 and it clicked and I went, hold up. <laughs> I heard the same whistle up here. So, and how far apart were you guys? How far were they uh, away when they were doing their research? 250 miles. That's crazy. So, here it gets stranger. A couple nights later, I'm getting ready to do the Coast to Coast AM show. And um, they're on West Coast time. I'm on East Coast time. I literally got two hours of sleep that night. I had to get up at 2.30 that morning. And uh, get on that show at 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. But I'm I'm sitting out here and I'm like uh, I have security cameras around my house, uh, the the blink systems, and it's not that I'm scared of anything. It's just you know I I like keeping an eye on my house. And my uh, camera across the road picked up something about an hour before I got up, and I was sitting there looking at it and looking at it, and all of a sudden I seen it. And it's a lot. And it's about the size of a baseball. And it floats up behind where my pickup truck is parked at. It floats up behind it, goes up in the sky a little bit, comes back down, and just kind of, just very fluid, like a, like a very fluid pattern that it flies in, and then it just, poof, disappears. 
I put it on Facebook, and of course, you know, the Facebook PhDs, they are like, oh, that's a bug. That's a moth. I get those all the time. Okay, so people send me their videos of moths. Compared side by side, they're not comparable. <laughs> this is a solid, when you zoom in, it's a solid um, shape, and it is perfectly round. It is a ball, a spherical light. With a moth, you can actually see, you know, a wing flap here and there. It's very erratic when it flies. Bugs the same way. But I just thought that that was so strange because that happened. The whistle uh, here, 15 miles from here, 250 miles from here, then the light and everything happened within three days. And I can't explain it. And it don't bother me now that I can't explain it, but I just can't explain it. Let me ask you a question, Mike. Have you, have you ever, um, next time you get, well, let me say this. Next time you get one of those orbs like that, try and take a snapshot. And this is what I've done for my camera project. Some of the stuff I never showed anybody. But if you can get a close up orb and you take a snapshot of that photo or that video and then zoom into the orb itself, I guarantee you, you will see a face inside of that ball of light. I've done it 10 times when I was running a camera project. And every time I saw a face inside the ball of light, it was utterly terrifying, utterly terrifying. But it was there. And I was like, OK, so why is there a face in this floating orb that's moving around? That's insane. Yeah, I, I, I've heard that a couple of times. But, you know, with me, you know, my biggest thing is I can accept that. I can accept everything you just said. I have no problem accepting that. My problem is, is what in the hell are they? And why, you know, I got asked on an interview the other night um, if I ever had anything follow me home. And I said, not to my knowledge, like as far as Bigfoot or anything like that. Out, and I'm sure they are here because you hear trees get pushed over every now and then. And I live in the woods. I, I live pretty deep in the eastern Kentucky. So, um you know, you hear stuff all the time, but the light, the whistle, you know, that stuff right there, I just want to know what they are. They're not bothering me by no means. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I would like to think they're spirits. Um, a couple of weeks ago when I was with my, uh, psychic friend and her husband, we, uh, you know, she told, she told me that she felt, she felt a, a great energy near me. And, you know, I want to think that it's my, my aunt and my, my mamma. Um, and she said she believes that it was. So they're with me all the time. And, I, you know, I'm sure I'm protected. I'm, I'm a very spiritual person. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't sound like I'm not religious. I'm, I'm spiritual. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty spiritual. But the uh, fact of the matter is, though, is, you know, this stuff is out there. And science would actually benefit from studying it, uh, especially the lights and, and everything. Uh, you know, Bigfoot, I ain't, I, I, between you and I and the 10,000 people that listen to this show, um, I don't think we'll ever find proof. Now I'm just collecting data, uh, trying to find bridges and, and connect the dots that maybe one day here in 50 years hopefully i won't be around but in 50 years they'll use my research and say you know uh he was on the he was on the right track but i don't think we'll ever find definitive proof i think we have a better chance of finding definitive proof of Loch Ness monster which uh, is which is hilarious to me by the way I'm on the same you know, track with you, bro, <laughs> as far as collecting data, because what I've discovered is you can present pretty good evidence. And unfortunately, because of the I call it the competitive nature of this field, people go about um, trying to discredit that evidence. It's just so I, I just present data points. You can't discredit data. You can discredit a photo or a video or and say it's pareidolia, but you cannot discredit years and years of data points with you know documented data because it's just pure raw information it can't be discredited mike we're about at the end of this interview brother 
Um, let's wrap this up. And how about you walk everybody through number one, if they want to reach out to you, how they reach out to you. Number two, what they need to be looking out for in the near future and where they can come out to meet you. And if you ever anywhere, you know, in the South, bro, I'll come out and hang out with you guys, bring you some cigars and we smoke some cigars and talk Bigfoot. Um, I like it. Let everybody know where they can find you so we can get you uh, get some people coming to your events. I have uh, next weekend, uh, the, uh, the 8th of October, is the Virginia Squatch Fest in Wires Cave, Virginia. That's hosted by the ECBRO. You can go on uh, uh, virginiabigfootcon.com and find all the information for that. Uh, he's also actually got a link for my barbecue sauce in there now, but I'll get to that. Um, the, um, the weekend after that, which is the 14th and 15th, I will be in Westminster, South Carolina at the South Carolina Bigfoot Festival. The 14th, be sure to come out. We're doing a meet and greet. Um, and all of us will be there. Daniel Benoit, myself, and, and a few others. We'll be there. Uh, we will be doing meet and greet and Q and A at seven thirty. Uh, so you can go on South Carolina Bigfoot Festival dot com for that one. Um, the weekend after that is actually going to be reserved for something, but I, I'm not going to be doing any appearances that weekend. The weekend after that, though, the 29th, I will be near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in Roscoe, Pennsylvania, at the American Legion for the Squatch and Treat um, bash they're having. Daniel Benoit and myself, and folks, normally when you hear Daniel Benoit's name you, or my name, one of us is pretty close by. We, we do a lot of events together. In fact, at the South Carolina Bigfoot Con or Bigfoot Festival, you can find Daniel and I at the same place. We're going to be, we're, we're going to share in a booth that, that weekend because uh, we're doing some stuff together and all that. But um, starting Monday, I will be filming something. Now, I can not I can say I'm filming something. I told Wes the same thing earlier, hence why I couldn't reschedule this. I'm filming something that's going to be out probably next year, hopefully. Um, that'll, be, that'll be pretty cool. It's, it's a very good concept, and I'm excited to be a part of it. And I don't know what network, so, you know, it is what it is. To reach me, the easiest way to reach me personally is just find me on Facebook, Michael W. Cook. I should be the only one on there. <laughs> and it's a picture of me at a bar and all that stuff. Uh, Cook Cryptid Research on Facebook. And also, the biggest plug I can throw out there is my, my baby. It's my personal business. My It's it's mine. Sasquatch LLC, barbecue sauce and gourmet hot sauce. Uh, four flavors out right now with a fifth one coming out. Actually, the fifth one is premiering at the Virginia Bigfoot Festival on October 8th. I'll have the new flavor there, and I will announce that flavor that day. Um, but, you know, the buzz around town is it's a very sweet uh, flavor. So if anybody can catch that and put the, put the two together. Um, that's what's coming out. So, sauceswatch.com, that's S-O-S-S-S-Q-U-A-T-C-H.com, all one word. And like I said, Sasquatch LLC on Facebook is a good way to find me, too. Um, you can also see me on These Woods Are Haunted, on Travel Channel, reruns. There's an episode of Paranormal Call on Camera floating around somewhere that's got me on it. I haven't watched it. I don't know when Tay is going to be on, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, and I got to plug this one real quick, uh, coming out next year, 2023, the, uh, the, the film, I believe in Bigfoot and it's, uh, filmed by, uh, claimed award-winning filmmaker, Kelly Lockman. And it's got myself, Michael W. Cook, Daniel Benoit, the Squatch Watchers of North Carolina, Ronald Moorhead, um, Turtle Man from uh, Call the Wild Man on Animal Planet. Mountain Man from Duck Dynasty. It's got a whole crew of people on it. And it's very well put together. I've seen bits and pieces. There's actually a trailer for it out right now on Facebook on the I Believe in Bigfoot Facebook page. And my book. Uh, I got two books coming out. The first one is uh, The Cryptic Cookbook. 
And, you know, I just don't make barbecue sauce. I use it. So, <laughs> that being said, I, uh, I actually am the Kentucky State chili champion. Uh, I, I make a chili that's, that'll blow your mind. And uh, then the Bigfoot. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the Crypto Cookbook has recipes from cryptozoologists like myself. Um, filled with stories too, uh, a few stories here and there, but most of it is, is about food and, and all that and how we use food and, and all that to kind of, uh, you know, form bonds and stuff. But the Bigfoot, how the woods will be out sometime. Who knows? I'm, uh, 280 pages in right now and I still have some editing to do and all that. But the book, uh, the Bigfoot out of the woods is the first of one of a series of out of that I'm coming out with. Um, the first one is the Bigfoot and the very next one. And I'm taking, uh, I'm taking stories right now. If you want to email me at info at Um, for UFO encounters and it's going to be UFOs out of the skies. And, uh, like I said, the Bigfoot out of the woods, it's going to be a good read and it's got all the stories. It's got behind the, well, not behind the scenes, but it's got a lot of uh, stuff that you wouldn't see on the TV shows that actually happened and 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 fact-based information. A uh, few funny stories in it, uh, but for the most part, it's just like we've been talking about. It's data, and the data that we've collected and I've collected over the last 20 years. So be looking out for that, and also my YouTube channel, Cook Cryptid Research. Got a brand new video up right now. And it's from the Quantum Bridge project that we uh, we started a few weeks ago. Uh, and it's got the picture that I was talking about with the face and the fire and everything else at the end of it. So it's like 15 or 16 minutes long. Not not bad just to sit down, you know, drink you a beer, smoke you a cigar or whatever and watch it and, and be and, and subscribe. There's more videos coming out. So. Also, TikTok, Michael W. Cook. <laughs> All right, Mike, brother, I appreciate you coming and hanging out and spending some time with us on the Dark Waters Network. I'm going to go ahead and post a link to, with this video, I'm going to post a link to where to get the barbecue sauce, and I'll buy me some barbecue sauce in the morning. And then I'll post a link to the YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen, so you can both subscribe and you can get you some sauce. Get you some sauce now. Nah, don't be playing. Get you some sauce. All right, Mike, brother, I appreciate you, man. Great talking to you. You too, man. All right, have a good night.